All right. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Omega TV here on the Radar Omega YouTube channel. Glad to have you with us tonight. We've got a lot of fun things planned. Got a lot of serious things we've got to talk about as well with this potential historic storm coming into the country for our holiday travel plans. I know a lot of people are excited about possibly getting a white Christmas but, of course, with that comes some hazards with the storm. So, again, we've got a lot on the agenda tonight. Got a, a live guest. Mr. Vince Welty had me cracking up over here in chat just a minute ago. <laughs> Talking about the lead-in video in my face. Glad my face is not on that. Thank you, Lily, for the awesome job with that video earlier today. And on the agenda tonight, first thing I need you guys to do in chat before we get started if you were around and you experienced the blizzard of 1978 let me know in the chat box let me know in the comment section because we're going to be talking about that storm that historic snowstorm and really be comparing that with what we've got on the models for this week so again if you were around let me know what part of the country you were in what city you were in for the blizzard of 78 maybe what you experienced as well and we'll get that to that towards the end of the live show uh, tonight so what we're going to be talking about the the points that we've got for tonight uh, we're going to be going over to live to vince welty in his storm chase vehicle uh, we'll be talking to him first the storm across the country the blizzard conditions the insanely cold temperatures, wind chill readings, possibly down to 50 below, and how you can track that with our storm chasers that will be out in the field, uh, Vince, Brandon, probably Don Murray as well, and how you'll be able to use their live video and their live conditions to watch the storm as it progresses. And from there, we're going to be talking about our stationary cyclone port systems all across the country as well and how you'll be able to track not just during the storm but before the storm this is going to be a wicked crazy drop in temperatures some locations may go from the 40s and 50s to the teens in a matter of three hours as this arctic front moves through so we'll show you how to use some of our stationary cyclone port units we'll welcome a new cyclone port to the network tonight we'll be talking about that and then, of course, we'll be looking at some of the model data. I will also be looking at the watches and warnings. We have blizzard warnings that have been issued. And then finally, we'll be talking about that 1978 Great Lakes blizzard and the impacts that it had. So again, a lot on the agenda for tonight. Uh, thank you, everyone, once again for tuning in. Chat is already going crazy. Let me know in chat where you're watching from tonight. And we'll get to those comments here in just a few minutes. So with that... We're going to go over to Vince out in the field. Give me just a second to uh, load a couple things up on that. And Vince, I see you there. Give me just a second to get your audio queued up. <clears throat> and again, Vince is just going to be showing you and talking about the sensors he has on his vehicle and the video capabilities he, he has on his vehicle. And then we will go from there. So with that, Mr. Vince, we've got it on you and I've got you loud and clear. All right, Drew. Good afternoon and evening, I guess, everybody. I guess it's already evening. Uh, I'm going to talk to you real quick about some of our cyclone port options. Uh, this is basically a mobile weather station. that's um, not designed for mobile use, um, but we have a genius by the name of Don Murray, uh, kind of the head of radar Omega here. He had this thought, well, let's put this weather station on a car and uh, drive it all over the place. And we did just that. I've been driving around this thing since April. It's basically a, a, an all-in-one unit with an anemometer. We get temperature, dew point, pressure, wind speed, wind direction, um, which is more of a stationary thing because obviously, you know, with mobile use, the, the vehicle is always changing its uh, its orientation. But this is a live updates every five seconds, unless there's a cellular connection issue. Sometimes we get those dead zones where it's not every five seconds, but this is an almost near uh, perfect real time solution. We've got a pan tilt zoom camera on the roof with uh, night vision. And then of course the, the in-car camera here uh, pointing out the window for that really high resolution um, 1080p HD uh, stream. So you can actually view this in the live uh, or in its live factor here in the Radar Omega app. Uh, and Drew will show you how to toggle all that on and off. 
Um, but basically, you know, you can see all that live real time weather data. So, yeah, you can look at those uh, airport weather stations or those METAR stations on Radar Omega. And that's fine. That's cool. Uh, but, you know, one of these cyclone port units, which is an expanding network, uh, might even be close to your house or close to your place of business or just have a video feed on. So you can not only see sky conditions, but you can see the road conditions. So we're going to be driving around. There's going to be at least three of us out there driving around, uh, checking road conditions to try to get that winter weather message across of, you know, safety, um, real time road updates. And of course, you know, assisting any motorists that may need it. Um, but you can actually see in real time what you're dealing with outside. Now it's dark out here and I did experiment a couple of minutes ago with maybe some studio lighting, but without bringing out uh, a good bunch of lighting here, I can't really show you what the equipment looks like on the roof. Uh, we'll do that maybe a pre-recorded segment. Um, but long story short, I've hit power lines, physically hit power lines with this equipment. And it's held up pretty well. So this is a pretty stable enterprise solution that we're using. Uh, it's great for public safety um, uh, enter uh, agencies as well. So definitely invite you to go check this out live in the Radar Omega app. Uh, that's probably the coolest place to watch live storm chasing when we're doing this because, you know, all the geeks that really like seeing, you know, temperature dew point, wind speed, which is awesome during hurricanes or pressure, which is really cool during hurricanes. And when we're close to tornadoes to see that pressure drop. Um, you're not going to see that on YouTube or on the television or on the news. You're going to see that in the app, which is really cool. So, Drew, unless you've got anything else, uh, I'll pass it back to you here. Uh, we're sitting at about 10 degrees here uh, in southern Wisconsin, and the car just now warmed up. So uh, it's good timing, I guess. Perfect. Thank you so much, Vince. Appreciate you. And we'll be checking in with you all throughout the week while you're out in the field. So, again, appreciate you for that. All right. Thanks, Drew. Thanks a lot. And with that, again, thanks to Mr. Vince braving the cold elements tonight up in wisconsin for his 10 degree live report just for you guys here on our live special so with that like i said that is the mobile version of the cyclone port you can see those icons moving around in the app once we have chasers active and that will probably be either late tomorrow evening especially during the day on thursday and friday as this storm really really ramps up and then, of course, with it being a holiday weekend, most everybody's going to be trying to get back home by Christmas Eve uh, so they can be home for Christmas Day. But lots of live coverage before that. Like I said, we'll plan live coverage Thursday, and then Friday is going to be the crazy day with extended live coverage from this potentially historic storm. So good, af good afternoon, good evening once again, everyone. Thank you so much for jumping into chat. We will do a segment on the Cyclone Ports, and you'll see this in just a moment, but this is the uh, sensor hub for the Cyclone Port system itself. So this actually is where the temperature, humidity, and the barometric pressure comes from, and that's what Vance has on his roof, as well as, of course, the wind sensor and the PTZ camera that he talked about. You'll see that that I just showed you. In this video, we want to welcome a new Cyclone Port system that I'm going to show you in the app first, and then we have some video that I'm going to show in the state of Tennessee, in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. This one come online this week. This is the Rutherford County EMA. It's actually installed at the Rutherford County Sheriff's Department building. You can see live conditions there in the app. Actually going to take you full screen just for a moment. So you can see that a little bit better. 44.9 degrees there in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Dew point a pretty dry 28 degrees. Light winds sustained around 3 miles per hour. You can see the graphs down below. And again, if you've never checked out the Cyclone Port data, I'll show you how to toggle that on in your system right at the bottom. So you make sure you select your tools button in the menu and right here where you see cyclone port you see that switch is turned on and you can see all the icons disappear when i turn it off so if you toggle that on you will see all the cyclone ports that again is a growing and expanding network all across the country and we have big plans to rapidly expand as we go into the new year so again with that welcome to the rutherford county sheriff's uh, office building it's actually on top of the jail there in murfreesboro tennessee thanks to don murray for this video on the roof yesterday very clean install and a very amazing amazing view check that out in all directions we're going to be able to track incoming weather and it, with an incredible bird's eye view there from the roof of that building 
and again an exceptional install that they had uh, uh, done there at that location wind sensor in a perfect location on the top of the building to capture the wind gust and once again I showed you the nighttime view but there's your daytime view that I captured earlier today again from the sheriff's office there in Murfreesboro Tennessee and of course if you click that camera image that will take you full screen so there's your daytime view that you've got and again this is a completely movable 360 degree camera uh, that they can control there to track storms track winter weather probably going to have a little bit of snow on this camera later this week as the system moves in there to central tennessee so again we're excited to have them on board with us and what you can do it's going to be exciting all week because we will be able to track this storm system that's just getting its act together across the rockies tonight it's going to be blasting into the plains as we get late into the day, probably tomorrow night, tomorrow evening, tomorrow night. The snow breaks out Thursday, especially. We'll go through those models here in just a moment. First one up will be our cyclone port system here in Burlington, Kansas. You can see not a lot going on there now. 23 degrees, dew point 15. Uh, they'll be first in line for this Arctic outbreak as it comes down. And then we may see a little bit of snow flurry activity for central Arkansas there. And then, of course, Butler and Stoddard Counties, Missouri. We have several cyclone ports in that area. You'll be able to track the crazy cold as it comes into southeast Missouri. Uh, you'll be able to see the live cams. Obviously, these live cameras are amazing because they have a really good night view. Let me go back to the Murfreesboro, Tennessee camera and show you. See the dots on the screen? Your screen's not dirty, those are stars. So again, this is incredible, incredible technology that we're using uh, to not only show you the weather during the daytime, because as you know, most of the crazy weather comes at night. Severe storms, tornadoes, ice, snow, you name it. We need to be able to see what it's doing after dark. So incredible low light technology with these cameras that we're using, and again, some nights on some cameras, you can pick out the uh, Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, the full moon nights. It's just amazing to see some of the features that you can check out at night. So I encourage you, if you've not already, to view the Cyclone Port Network, play around. We've got several in North Georgia, North Alabama, Tennessee. We're expanding again rapidly. Uh, one of my favorite ones that I've got to show off on the Tennessee River that we installed just recently down in Florence, Alabama. So check that out. That is a live view of the Tennessee River. And you can see again, stars there at the top of the screen. So just incredible, incredible. Come over to chat just for a second and then we're gonna jump into our maps because we've got a lot to talk about on the maps tonight, guys. I appreciate your chats and I appreciate your comments in chat. I'm gonna go back up here in just a second with the, with the uh, Cyclone Port Network, as Vince talked about with the mobile side and as I talked about with the stationary side, we're gonna be able to track this incoming blizzard. And with that, before I start showing some of the model data, I want to show you the blizzard warnings that's actually just been issued. And then we're gonna go to a follow-up with Mr. Brandon Kopic that he recorded uh, that really builds on Vince's last night video, if you were tuning in last night, about what maybe some items you need to have in your vehicle if you have to get out and about. So right here on the weather alert settings, I'm showing you this on your screen. I had them all toggled off because I just wanted to show you radar. So here's your toggle switch to turn all your alerts on or off in the program. And this is where you can view winter alerts as well. And if you go down, let me make you full screen so you can see my entire menu. There you go. And your weather alert settings here and make sure everything is toggled on on the severe tropical and winter source as well we've got multiple blizzard warnings that have been issued we have winter storm watches and winter storm warnings in effect so look at that very very active map the pink coloration here is winter storm warnings for most of iowa up through wisconsin portions of minnesota blizzard warnings the bright red color you see on the map there portions of Minnesota all the way down to the border of Iowa blizzard warnings have now been issued and we have winter storm watches still up for southeastern Wisconsin northwestern Indiana most of Illinois and portions of Missouri and Kansas as well even a winter storm watch there in portions of Indiana southern Indiana 
and Kentucky. And you'll see this map fill in a whole lot more as we get throughout the night tonight and into the day tomorrow. So before we start looking at model maps, if you are watching last night, we talked about if you have to get out and travel, what you need to prepare for, how you need to prepare your vehicle. Vince talked about checking your battery, checking your fluids, checking the uh, the tire uh, tread on your tires to make sure you're not running on uh, bad tires that you're not going to have any traction with. And really big thanks to Brandon Kopic today for really adding on top of that vi video that Vince did yesterday with maybe some of the preparedness items you need to have specifically with you in the event that you get stranded in snow or any type of winter weather. The biggest threat with this storm, high winds, frigid, frigid temperatures, and possible power outages. We're going to go through the models here in just a second, but it has many, many hazards to this storm. And we're going to go over to Brandon here for just a few minutes. While we're watching Brandon, I'm going to be catching up over here in the chat window, and we'll get back to the model maps and talk about the Blizzard of 78 here in just a second. So with that, we're going over to Mr. Brandon Kopic. Hey guys, Storm Chaser Brandon Kopic here for Radar Omega. We are currently looking behind me at all the things you want to keep in your trunk for the winter weather preparedness. You want to have all these things anytime you have to travel in extreme weather conditions in the winter, especially with this upcoming blizzard. Clearly, as Drew's been stating, we do not want people to be driving this event, but if by chance you have to travel by necessity, then let's get in here and see the tools that you need for success. So in the trunk here, you can see there's a multitude of things. We'll step back, get a better view. There's a lot of things you want to have as your winter preparedness kit. Obviously, you want a shovel, right? Definitely want a shovel if you by chance get stuck and you can dig yourself out easily, or if you get stuck and need to clear your tailpipe. A shovel, preferably collapsible, would be a necessity. Now we've gotten plenty of other things in here. Let's start with the first aid kit. Definitely, you never know what you might need. It's always safe to have a first aid kit. You're gonna want your booster cables in case you have to turn off and restart your car and it doesn't start. Then you're gonna to wanna to have something like this or a jump box, that way you can jump your battery and get your car started again. As well as a snow scraper and snow brush. That is something that is absolutely necessary anytime you're driving in the snow. Obviously, you want water. Bring plenty of water. If you're traveling regardless, at least pick up a case of water and throw it in your trunk. You're going to want a tool kit as well, and that's what this is for, the box cutter. You want something with a knife. You want to have all available resources you can have. And let's go back in here. Kitty litter. Definitely kitty litter. You are going to want to have kitty litter. That way, if by chance you do get stuck, this kitty litter or sand will give you the extra traction you need and may be able to help you get out of the situation. As well as personally, for me, I carry a tow strap. If you by chance get stuck and somebody comes by offering to help, if you have a tow strap, you just solved half the battle. All they need to do is give you a quick tug out of the snow and you'd be all right. And then let's go back down here. You want a snack, a high calorie energy snack, something that's non-perishable. You want something that you can keep in your car, something that'll help keep you energized and keep you going, as well as blankets. Definitely, you wanna keep blankets in your car just in case you need to turn the car off and still stay warm if all your layers are not enough and obviously always layer up then as well as you're going to want to have flashlights with extra batteries if not have a multitude of flashlights and a power bank your car have your car chargers in there have your cigarette lighter adapters for your phones and everything like that but if you have to turn off your car a power bank can be a saving grace always have a power bank with you and then obviously i have my bag have all your extra clothes in that bag you want to have everything you possibly could need in the back of your vehicle in the off chance that you get stranded we don't want anybody to be getting stuck in the snow we really don't want people in the snow at all it's important to stay home and stay safe but if you do have to travel then be prepared Brandon Kopic for Radar Omega. All right. And thank you so much again, Brandon, for filming that for us earlier today. Again, bottom line, guys, be prepared for the worst if you have to venture out in the elements this week. I know if you're like me and you're a weather nerd, you get excited about weeks like this with big time snow, big time wind, and the crazy temperatures. But you've got to remember 
there is a dangerous side to the storm. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to talk about some of the impacts that you can expect. Thank you. I was reading through chat while Brandon was talking. Um, several of you were around for the blizzard of 78. And again, we'll get to the comparisons with that in just a moment. Uh, was in Niles, Michigan. It had so much snow, had to get a huge front end loader to get the sister to the emergency room, Lyle Unger says. So thank you for that. Uh, Pam was in the blizzard in Cincinnati working for P&G. First day they ever closed down. So again, talking about historic impacts from that storm. And I'm afraid we're going to be talking about historic impacts this week as we get later into the week and into the as well. So yes, very good mention for uh, clearing out your snow. If you get stranded, I really love what Brandon said there in that video. and Somebody just commented there in chat. If you get stranded in the snow and you have to occasionally crank your vehicle to stay warm, you've got to make sure that you clear out that snow around the tailpipe of the vehicle because if not, carbon monoxide can back up into the vehicle and you know that's dangerous in itself. So very good job again. Thank you so much, Brandon, for filming for us uh, that was for us earlier today. Again, looking at the watch warning map there on your screen, we're going to get over to some of the model data because now we are in range from the high resolution NAM computer model. Last night we looked at the GFS. We'll still look at the GFS tonight, but we're also in range now that we'll be able to see the NAM and some more values. So we're going to go back over to full screen so you can see my menu there for just a second. If you're an alpha subscriber, to the app, you have access to the computer model data. You hit your menu button there in the top left. The drop down is here, and you'll go down and select models. And we've got them categorized by the different types of models. Your CAMs, or your convection allowing models, that's your HRRR, and your NAM 3 kilometer. Those are short range computer models that go out between 18 and about 48 hours in the future. The regional computer models are your 12 kilometer NAM and the RAP computer model. And then of course you've got your global models, which is the GFS American computer model and the European computer model. And as you know, we just recently added some of the tropical models. Now the tropical models are only for landfalling tropical systems or storms. So that's not going to be relevant, of course, with this system. But we are going to look at the 12 kilometer NAM. First, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to clear our weather alerts off the map just so they don't clutter up the screen here so we can see what's going on. This at the bottom, you can see I started out with the two meter above ground temperature value from the NAM. We're going to quickly go through the temperature, then we're going to look at some of the model uh, precip values, maybe some of the snow totals. And then the most dangerous part of the storm, guys, may be the wind. We may have hurricane force wind gusts coming across portions of the Great Lakes with this blizzard. Power outages, unfortunately, are looking likely for the impacted areas. And then you factor the power outages with the blowing and drifting snow, almost zero visibility, and frigid temperatures. We've got a mess coming up. So if you notice at the top, we're looking at the zero Z computer model run from the NAM. Notice this red at the bottom. If you see that in your Radar Omega program, that's telling us that that computer model is not finished running just yet. That literally is just hot off the presses. And you can click the drop down here at the top and notice how it's 30% complete on the 0Z run. So we can start out looking at that, but we're not going to be able to go all the way through the storm since the 0Z is not completed just yet. You can see there, we're not quite loaded into the program. That is not an app problem. If you ever see that and the data blanks out, just know you're looking at a model run that is still processing, still being ingested from the servers. If you go back to the last model run, which is the 18Z, notice that's completely green there in the menu. That's letting you know that run is completely finished and is loaded into the app so we can go all the way through the time frame. So again, just I like to do a little teaching and a little bit of Q&A here while we're doing these live events to maybe teach you something that you did not know before. Also, you can click play here at the bottom, and of course that animates through the entire model run, but one of my favorite features in the app, we're gonna stop the animation, 
if you click and hold, if you're on the desktop version, or if you're on the app on a mobile device or a tablet, just touch and hold that play button. Now notice what I have at the bottom. I've got the scrubber bar where we can literally go back and forth frame by frame with the model data. You can do the exact same thing with radar data. If you're looking at MRMS or single site radar, you can go frame by frame, one frame at a time. And this really, really helps when you're looking at some of these systems. So we're starting out again this afternoon with the NAM. There's the very cold air seeping in from Canada. The white colors there on the map are zero and below. So you, we can go in and use our inspector tool to really get you the readout of the temperature. So again, anywhere that you see that white coloration and points north, we are well below zero, 20s below zero overnight tonight in North Dakota. So frigid, frigid air has already arrived up in that part of the country. And as you saw on that little preview, it will continue to blast south and east. Here we are tomorrow morning with the temperatures, zero degrees, blasting through South Dakota into Nebraska. And then look at that cold front coming through Kansas and Iowa as well. This is valid at midnight tomorrow night going into Thursday morning. And check out Oklahoma. Here it comes straight from the north. Cutting uh, Missouri right in two as well. Warmer, not warm, but warmer air, southeastern Missouri, Thursday morning. And below zero in Kansas City at 9 a.m. Thursday morning. And then as we continue to go throughout the day on Thursday, look at that. Dallas, you're in the deep freeze by afternoon. Houston, here it comes knocking on your door by 3 p.m. Uh, look, at, look at Arkansas. I mean, literally, that is an incredible, incredible gradient. If you get to experience this drop in temperature as this front comes through, you're probably not going to forget this anytime soon. Check out Southeast Arkansas, Thursday afternoon, 3 p.m., 47 degrees. Little Rock on the front, 36. And how about 5 degrees in Northwest Arkansas behind the front? So again, an incredible gradient on the temperature side. And that's really as the storm is just ramping up. Again, this is not at its strongest point. Look at all the below zero readings again in the northern plains. This is where wind chill readings may be as low as 40 or 50 below. And then it continues to blast east overnight Thursday night into Friday morning. Here we are at 6 a.m. Friday morning. Check out that zero degree line. Most of the state of Illinois below zero. Indiana below zero. Northern Kentucky, temperatures below zero. Southwestern and Western Ohio as well, temperatures below zero by Friday morning. Almost all of the state of Missouri as well, below zero. Even Northwest Arkansas, check it out on this run. Temperatures dropping below the zero mark. Look at Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, maybe four degrees to start out Friday morning. And if you just saw, Nashville will be in the 50s ahead of the cold front. So an incredible sharp gradient. Same thing West Virginia and Virginia. Again, West Virginia in the teens, uh, maybe just east of there in the mountains, mid-30s, Washington, D.C., close to 40 degrees Friday morning ahead of the cold front. And then that temperature continues to plummet as you see that cold air getting wrapped around and really sucked into the system all the way through Saturday. This is valid Friday night at midnight Cold air has almost overtaken the entire at this point. So again, just an incredible load of Arctic frigid air as we get into the rest of the week. Jumping back over here at chat just for a minute while you watch that cold air animation there on the screen. Let me flip you back over to our picture in picture. There we go. And yes, I agree. Some of you guys are saying if it's going to be this cold, you know, be careful playing out in the snow because when you've got those wind chill readings this cold and this much below zero, you can get frostbite literally in minutes. So make sure you dress in layers. Make sure that you protect anybody, elderly especially, if they don't have any heat source, they need to get somewhere that they can stay warm during the storm. This is just going to be a dangerous, dangerous cold Arctic outbreak. And again, as much as the wind is going to be crazy and the snow and the blizzard is going to be crazy, I'm afraid the frigid temperatures may end up being the bigger story of this event. So with that, let's flip over 18Z. 
Notice tonight, not a lot of wind across the country. A little bit of gusty winds as the storm's getting its act together out across the, the peaks of the Rocky Mountains. As we go throughout midday tomorrow, winds start to get a little breezy there in the plains. Nothing crazy yet. There's the cold front. Let's play who can find the cold front. Check out the cold northerly winds there coming through Kansas and Nebraska. Nothing again. Nothing that you're not used to yet. 30, 35, 40 knot wind gust. That's on the order of 45 to 50 miles per hour. So still crazy cold. You factor then 40, 45 mile per hour wind gust with below zero temperatures. It's very, very dangerous. But probably not hurricane force wind gusts just yet. That's going to happen as this blizzard really ramps up and really winds up across the Great Lakes region. Here we are Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Notice some of those higher winds already starting to show up there. Central Oklahoma, you guys may easily gust 50 to 60 miles per hour as that cold front passes you. Even some higher gusts still up there in South Dakota as we get into midday on Thursday. Notice we've got some 40 and 40 plus knot wind gusts there. Maybe 45 knot wind gusts. Uh, if you think about severe weather, 50 knot is 58 miles per hour. That's designated a severe thunderstorm. So you can have structural damage and of course uh, tree damage, maybe some power line damage once winds get over about 50 knots here on this uh, map. So again, very blustery, very windy, but it continues to get worse. If you're going to be sitting in Chicago at noon Thursday thinking, what blizzard? Not a whole lot going on just yet with the wind. Just wait. Same thing with you guys in Michigan. Noon Thursday, you're just you're just literally hanging out waiting for the storm to arrive because it will not be there yet. But as we get later into the evening Thursday, notice those winds starting to ramp there in the Great Lakes region. Gusty, not crazy still. I think Friday is going to be the craziest day with the storm. So here we are at 3 a.m. Friday morning wind gust. Notice here on the lake shore eastern part of Wisconsin and over uh, Lake Michigan, probably easily 40 knot, 45 mile per hour wind gusts, possibly approaching 50 mile per hour wind gusts there in the Chicago area early Friday morning before the sun comes up. And then as we continue to go throughout the day on Friday, notice what happens right around the Great Lakes. We're going to stop here at, I think, noon. Yeah, let's stop here at noon. This is the one I was looking at earlier. Notice right along the lake shore, easily 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gust. And in the northeastern part there of Minnesota, right along the lake, you get that lake fetch setting up. Coming winds will be coming out of the northeast. 50 plus, that's 60 mile per hour wind gust possible. Even back here in Minnesota and Iowa. 40, 50 mile per hour plus wind gusts still ongoing as this storm starts to crank. Detroit, again, especially lakefront, 40 to 50 easily mile per hour sustained winds. Some hurricane force wind gusts are possible. I don't say that lightly, guys, especially near the lakes. Buffalo, you're included in this wind machine. As we go throughout the day on Friday, you are very, very likely going to see easily some 60 plus mile per hour wind gusts. And I would not be shocked at all to see 75, 80, maybe 85 mile per hour wind gusts there in the Great Lakes region. This is 9 p.m. Friday night. Let's get our inspector tool going again. Just south of Buffalo, again, 60 mile per hour winds easily coming off the lake. Uh, we're looking at setting up shop for our uh, chasers a Airbnb in somewhere in southwestern Michigan, probably in this area. Winds coming off of Lake Michigan, easily maybe hurricane force wind gusts. So that's right now our early plans. We're going to finalize that, I think, late tonight and tomorrow morning. But if you are anywhere close to the water, be prepared for some intense winds, possible long-term power outages as well. I want you to think about if you lose power, do you have a way to heat your property because if you don't this is the time that you need to be making plans to figure out okay if it's a raging blizzard outside and I can't just get in the vehicle and go somewhere what are you gonna do to stay warm from the storm and I know everybody's thinking about Christmas and I know we're getting excited for the holiday season that's upon us right now 
But, like I said, I love having fun here on the channel, but got to be serious just for a second. This is a potentially historic storm that we may talk about for years, if not decades to come. The Christmas week blizzard of 2022. So, again, think about everything that you need to prepare for. If you're going to be away from your residence for Christmas, think about preparing your pipes making sure you leave your heating source turned on so you don't come back to frozen pipes. Uh, think about just everything there at your house that you need to secure from 60 or 70 mile per hour wind gust. So you don't want your personal property blowing around, lawn, chair, furniture, whatever you've got, make sure you secure all that. Christmas decorations, you know, for those inflatables, make sure you unplug those. Because if not, your neighbors or maybe somebody on the next block will probably be getting your Christmas decorations that you've got out um, from the wind part of the storm. Now, with that, this goes up through 9 p.m. Friday. We can go just a couple more frames. Again, this is the high resolution NAM. We are able to go all the way out to Friday night at this point. Friday night at midnight is where we are right now on the high resolution NAM. So notice those winds will be cranking. Let's look at precipitation because we've talked about temperature. We've talked about wind. We're going to loop that through one time. Let's talk about precip. Let's talk about when the snow starts and where. And then we'll talk about snow amounts from this storm as well. So let's go over. We're going to go all the way to the bottom and I'm going to select our precipitation type from the NAM computer model. Again, we're looking at the high resolution 12 kilometer. We're going to let that load up rewind and here we are this evening tuesday evening not a lot going on across the country let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see the whole country there we go rain in the west snow in the uh rocky mountains this evening that's our big storm coming out of the rockies here we are late tonight snow possibly moving into the mountains west of the denver area tomorrow morning 4 a.m through 6 a.m snow starting to break out in the dakotas not a lot of wind, remember, just yet with this system. That wind's going to start cranking up overnight tomorrow night and into Thursday. But not a lot going on. Maybe some light snow breaking out there in portions of Kansas, Nebraska, uh, the Dakotas, into Minnesota as we get into the evening hours tomorrow night. So when we're doing our live tomorrow night, probably around... 8 or 9 p.m. We're going to have a lot of snow on radar to track. Here is, let's go back to around midday uh, tomorrow, Wednesday. Here's noon central time on Wednesday. Snow starting to break out again in Kansas, eastern Nebraska, really moving into portions of Minnesota, the Dakotas, Wyoming, lots of snow still going on. Kansas City, you'll probably see some light snow starting tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. Des Moines up to Minneapolis. Heavy snow moves in tomorrow evening. St. Louis, I think you guys will be dry through the evening hours tomorrow, but that changes in a hurry for St. Louis all the way down to the southeast uh, Missouri, the Boot Hill area, as we get later into the time. Maybe some light rain moving into the Boot Hill of Missouri, up through central Arkansas, southern Illinois. This is midnight tomorrow night, Wednesday night, going into Thursday morning. Snow still off to the west. So Kansas City, back through portions of eastern Nebraska, Des Moines. You've still got snow falling tomorrow night at midnight. Most of Wisconsin, except maybe southeastern part of the state, heavy snow. Maybe starting to taper off there in the Dakotas just a little bit. Minnesota, western Minnesota, southwest Minnesota. Maybe a break as we get late tomorrow night into early Thursday morning. But again, here we go. St. Louis, 6 o'clock Thursday morning. Maybe a little bit of rain as you're still on the warmer side of the storm. But don't worry. Check out what happens by midday on Thursday. Heavy snow moving through northeast Oklahoma, southeastern Kansas. That cyclone port there in Kansas will be rocking and rolling with wind and likely snow Thursday morning. Most of central and northeast Missouri, including the St. Louis area, Heavy snow likely if by noon on Thursday, if not before, and that extends through most of eastern Iowa. Des Moines, maybe you'll be winding this thing down a little bit by noon on Thursday. Wisconsin, gracious, look at that. Heavy, heavy snow continues from Madison all the way up through 
uh, the Great Lakes right there off the off the western side of Lake Michigan is what I'm trying to say. Milwaukee all the way up through Green Bay, uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Heavy snow continues there at noon on Thursday. Chicago, you guys are rocking and rolling with snow. Uh, let's back that up just a little bit for you guys there in Chicago, see where that changes over. Probably Thursday morning, you see the snow moving in there between 6 a.m. and maybe noon on Thursday is when heavy snow really starts to crank there in the Chicago metro area. All the way down through Springfield, Illinois, St. Louis again by noon, I think snow is moving in. Jefferson City, Missouri back through Springfield and all the way back to Tulsa and maybe even Oklahoma City. Uh, you guys will be seeing some snow all the way down to Fort Smith, Arkansas. So there's your snow line at noon Thursday. It's really when our winds start to crank as well later into the day on Thursday. And then as we go throughout Thursday evening, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. Central Time here, maybe St. Louis, quick hitter, damage is already going to be done, snow's going to be on the ground because remember, Temperatures are going to go down below zero, so everything pretty much that falls that's frozen will be sticking and accumulating immediately. There's not going to be a whole lot of melting with this system. That's valid at 6 p.m. Thursday evening. Snow moving into northwest Mississippi, west Tennessee, eastern Arkansas, southeastern Missouri. Moving into central Kentucky, St. Louis again, maybe by 9 p.m. Thursday. Looks like the snow is off to your east. Moving still through Chicago, through Indy, all the way up through all of Michigan. UP and uh, lower Michigan as well. Grand Rapids over to Detroit. Detroit, I think your magic switch over time is probably somewhere between 9 p.m. and midnight on Thursday, according to this model run. 9 p.m., there's your rain snow line coming through Cincinnati, coming up through the Toledo area as well, right around 9 p.m., uh, Detroit may be hanging on to some rain there at 9 o'clock, but then as we go one frame, check out what happens by midnight. Heavy snow moving through Columbus, Ohio. Cleveland, you're about to switch over as well. Detroit, you'll probably already be switched over to heavy, blowing snow. Grand Rapids, still snowing like crazy. And watch what happens with the system. We get the wraparound effect back into Wisconsin as that low pressure system really starts to crank. So briefly there, maybe a, a wind down in the snow, midnight, Thursday night into Friday. But then again, watch what happens. There's your snow coming into East Tennessee, maybe the mountains of North Georgia, early Friday morning, East Kentucky, West Virginia, again, most of the state of Ohio. I know you guys have had some pretty crappy model runs there in Ohio that's shown maybe not a lot, not a lot of snow in the central part of the state. Hold on to your hats. I think you'll be pretty happy with the snow that you get from this event. We'll look at that here in just a moment. But again, Detroit, Toledo, heavy snow continues early Friday morning. And there's that wraparound effect. Notice how that's coming back down from the north as this low pressure system cranks right there in the Great Lakes. So snow will move back into the Chicago area, back into the Madison, Wisconsin area, Green Bay from the north, midday Friday. And this is when it's going to be crazy with those winds. Winds 50, 60, 70 miles per hour, maybe some gusts over 80 as that low pressure really intensifies rapidly across the Great Lakes and starts moving up into Canada. Even across the border into southwestern Canada, heavy, heavy snow, big time impacts. And I'll show you in just a second, we can actually track this storm as it moves into Canada. We've got radars in your Radar Omega app that you will be able to track the heavy snow once it starts moving out of the Great Lakes region and into Canada. So we'll look at that in just a moment as well. This is valid 6 p.m. Friday, 9 p.m. Friday, and as far out as we can go right now with the NAM, midnight Friday night into Saturday morning. We'll check out a lot of that lake effect, lake enhanced snow from the UP of Michigan down still coming off of Lake Michigan in the southwest Michigan, right where our headquarters is likely going to be for our chasers. Detroit, still snow falling. Buffalo, you're going to get blasted with wind and snow from the system as that low pressure moves to your north. And maybe some light snow still falling there in Ohio, parts of PA, and West Virginia. So we're, that was what radar may look like. Let's go and look at our possible snowfall amounts so there you go everywhere with blue on the map some snowfall accumulation is possible 
Now, the models have really struggled with the intensity of this storm and some of the snowfall amounts. We'll look at snowfall here on the NAM. We'll look at snowfall on the GFS. We'll compare both of those here in just a second. But you can easily see not a ton of snow, you know, far south. Oklahoma, maybe an inch, two inches. St. Louis, a quick one to three inches, I think is a good bet for you. And again, this is going to be a quick, pretty quick moving system across portions of Kentucky. Ohio, that may be underdone just a little bit for you guys because you get some of those banding features set up across Ohio and Indiana with those what we call deformation bands rotating around the low pressure system. So there's your snow from the NAM. Let's go over to the GFS and we can actually compare amounts with the two models. So let's see if we can load up the 18Z GFS. We'll let that load in here just for a second. And I'm going to jump back over to your chat and we'll, we'll go through that. Glad to have Brandon here in the chat with us tonight. And again, let that, that is loaded. We'll go through, we'll let that play here just for a second. We're looking at the GFS snowfall from the 18Z model run. So we're going to let that loop through. You watch that just for a second. I'm going to go back over here to chat and get caught up because we've got a lot of people that is watching us tonight. Appreciate that. And we've got a lot of people here in chat letting me know what you've got going on, where you're located tonight. I appreciate that. And um, let's see. Mobile Bay, Alabama checking in. Appreciate that. Uh, yes, we will have Brandon and Vince out there in the field and likely Don Murray as well. Like I said, if you're just now joining us, we talked about that at the beginning of the show. Um, you can use your car mats for traction. Very good idea. Thank you for that. And cheap throw rugs are good to keep in your trunk. Very good, Chris. Very good suggestion. Uh, you can use those to get traction if you get stuck in the snow as well. Very, very good. Yep, and check out, like I said, everybody's saying check on your neighbors. You know, if, you, if they're out, if they're elderly, maybe they have a heart condition, uh, the shoveling snow. I saw somebody mention heart attacks are very common when people are shoveling the heavy snow. Here's the GFS computer model. We're going to compare that with the NAM. We're going to go back to... Christmas Day. So this is valid Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Now notice the amounts are a little bit heavier here in some locations, namely Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, uh, maybe portions of Tennessee, Iowa. The GFS is a little bit more happy with you getting more snow than the NAMs. Check it out, maybe up to half a foot of snow in the Des Moines area. Excuse me, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, possibly six to ten inches. And then as you get closer to the lakes, notice how those amounts go up, possibly a foot there near the Green Bay area. And then look at Michigan, the UP of Michigan, all the way down into the Lansing area. Now, how about two feet of snow for you guys? How about maybe two and a half feet of snow for parts of the UP of Michigan with a storm? Lansing, maybe a little bit over a foot. Detroit, there you go, six to ten inches easily. It all depends on the exact track of the storm. Down to the Toledo area, probably a good five, six inches minimum for you guys. Indy, I would say at least three to six inches for you. And again, parts of Ohio, I think at bare minimum, two to three inches on the low end. And as you see here, some of the higher locations may see six to 10 inches of snow in Ohio, in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, look at New York State with the wraparound uh, lake enhanced lake effect snow. Two feet, maybe south of Buffalo, near the Buffalo area. Up here near the Watertown area as well, just north of Syracuse. How about two plus feet for you guys? Uh, right there near and around Watertown, New York. So anywhere you see that red shade, uh, that is over two feet of snow. So again, incredible snow amounts. But remember, as excited as we all get about the snow, it's the wind, it's the power outages, it's the frostbite, it's the long term below freezing that's your threats with the storm. This isn't your everyday snowstorm blizzard. This is a long 
impactful storm that's going to be moving across the country. Storm goes through pretty quick. When I say long, I mean we're not going to go above freezing in many locations, even in the deep south, until next week. So once you drop below freezing, when that cold front goes through, you're looking at 80 plus hours minimum. Some locations may not go above freezing, especially in parts of the Midwest, until the middle or end of next week as we get a warmer pattern starting to build back into the country. So how does this compare? I know we talked about the blizzard of 78 at the beginning. Wanted to end with the blizzard of 78. Um, how does this compare with that system? We really want to talk about that, and I wanted to show you a couple graphics uh, that I got, if I can get them loaded in. Give me just a second. Let me throw these in on the fly because they're not wanting to load for me. But we're going to try this again. I have some of the weather maps pulled up from the blizzard of 78 showing the comparison. We're going to look at January 25th, 1978. I'm just going to throw this on top of our map where we're looking at it right now. Uh, let me readjust that size because I had it loaded in all nice. But of course, doing live events, you know there's something going to mess up. So right there in the middle of your screen, I know it's, look, we're looking at 1978. We're not looking at Radar Omega, obviously, in 1978. So if you look here at the bottom of your screen, notice you've got your two areas of low pressure there, one across the northern plains and one across Texas and Oklahoma. That is what led to the historic blizzard of 1978. Those two low pressure systems merged and formed an intense, intense blizzard. Now this is January, that was the 25th, January 25th, 1978. This is January the 26th. Look what happens. You've got a huge area of low pressure right across the Great Lakes region, basically right where this storm is gonna be. The top part you can see there, the isobars, huge low pressure there on the east side of Michigan. All the gray shaded there is snow, heavy snow, blizzard conditions. And then as we go forward one more day to January 27th, notice that it moves up into Canada. Look at those isobars, how they're packed tightly. We had wind gusts that were in excess of hurricane force with this storm. Widespread wind gusts average 50 to 70 miles per hour. Uh, for much of the day on the 26th, they reached 69 miles per hour at Dayton. Columbus, Ohio reached 82 miles per hour. And we also had an orc area that was stranded in thick ice on Lake Erie just offshore that reported sustained winds of 86 miles per hour with gusts to 111 miles per hour on the morning of January 26, 1978. Snowfall was difficult to measure in many of these locations due to the wind and the blowing and the drifting of the snow. Officially, uh, snowfall from January 25th through January 27th of 1978 ranged from about 5 inches in Columbus to 7 inches in the Cincinnati area to about 13 inches in the Dayton, Ohio area. Other areas further north saw snowfall well in excess of a foot. And what I'm reading is a very cool page that I'll put in the description here after uh, we end this live event. This is a, a page that the National Weather Service has dedicated to the Great Blizzard of 1978. I'm reading it from the Wilmington, Ohio National Weather Service office. I'm not going to read it all to you, but it talks about the winds. It talks about the pressure. We had low pressure records set all across Ohio. Uh, if you're a weather nerd again and you follow the pressure readings, we had pressures in the 28.30 range. Uh, Cleveland's record low pressure was broke, and it was 28.28 inches of mercury, which remains the lowest pressure ever recorded in Ohio, and one of the lowest pressure readings ever recorded in the mainland U.S. So again, 28.28 inches of mercury. I'd have to do the conversion to see what that is in millibars, because you know we do a lot of things in millibars here in the weather enterprise. So again, I'll go ahead and hide that. That is a comparison. That's what the weather maps look like in 1978. And you just saw there on the screen how that really stacks up and how that 
it's kind of eerie how it compares with the track of this low pressure system so let's jump back over here to our chat thank you again everyone for tuning in tonight this has been a fantastic uh turnout i appreciate everyone uh from for tuning in tonight before I go back to your comments, here's our game plan again. We're looking at a chaser headquarters that we're going to set up southwestern part of Michigan, probably very near the lake. Um, Brandon and Don and Vince will likely be based in that location. I was talking to Don earlier this morning, and this is a lot different from the Buffalo snow. Now, you remember they went up to Buffalo, and Buffalo got, got like six feet of snow in a couple days. It was historic. But what you did not have in the Buffalo storm was the wind. So this storm is going to have pretty heavy snow, probably not six foot anywhere, but heavy snow, but you're going to have the wind that is just going to be insane. So you really have to think about the blowing and the drifting snow. The dry snow, with it being powdery, probably won't be the best snowman making snow in the world. You know, that's when we're up in upper 20s, lower 30s. It's a very... A wet snow. We're not talking about this. This is going to be a dry, blowing, drifting snow, and you're really going to lower visibility. What is a blizzard? I wanted to talk about that for a second. What defines a blizzard? If you go over and check out Vince Welty's uh, Twitter page, he did a really cool post uh, a little bit earlier about what defines a blizzard. He did a graphic, and basically the blizzard term means it's a winter storm with winds of 35 miles per hour or greater for three or more hours or visibilities one quarter mile or less. Three hours is key. You can have snow squalls with 35, 40 mile per hour winds. Visibilities go down to zero, but in those snow squalls, it probably only lasts 15, maybe 30 minutes at the most. That's why that's not a blizzard. That's why we have snow squall warnings. The three hours or more is the main criteria for defining a blizzard, and that's what we're talking about this week. So, again, the snow, photo, snow totals will be a significant concern, but the frigid temperatures, the wind chill values, all that is going to combine into making just a very, very dangerous situation across the country. I'm going to go back to the NAM and I'm going to read chat, but I'm going to leave you while I'm reading chat with that temperature animation once again, because I really think that tells the story as you see that cold, cold air mass just plunging across the country and really taking over. Let's go back. That's the 0Z. Let's go back to 18Z so you'll see the full loop. I'm going to jump back over here. So again, we're talking about game plan for the week. Southwestern Missouri headquarters for our chasers. We're going to be here tomorrow. We're going to be producing a video. We'll probably put on the channel midday, early afternoon. Uh, recorded video talking about some of the model differences. Uh, we're going to go back and update our white Christmas forecast. If you tuned in this weekend, we did the video on the channel about if you will see a white Christmas. And I told you then, I think that was Sunday, looking at the NAM. We'll be looking at the GFS and we'll be giving you the best best forecast for if you will see a white Christmas at your location. I'm going to go back and use several of the comments from that Sunday video. Several of you commented and several of you told me where you're tuning in from and I'll give you a customized forecast based on your comments. So again, thank you everybody for jumping in and it's it's two way here. I'm not going to sit here and we're not going to talk for hours on end about the weather. It's going to be a two way conversation always here on Omega TV because that's the only way that we can help you out and answer those very, very critical questions as we get through severe weather, winter weather, and the sunny days as well. So with that, we're going to do another, like I said, recorded video tomorrow, live event tomorrow night, 8 or 8.30, probably 8.30 Central Time, 9.30 Eastern. And then we're going to start our live coverage of the storm Thursday. So live coverage begins Thursday. Don't have an exact time set just yet. I will post that here on our YouTube page as a community post when we figure out exactly when we go live on Thursday. And then Friday will be probably the craziest day of the week. Uh, long form winter weather coverage. I almost said severe weather coverage. But long form winter coverage all during the day Friday. Probably into Friday evening as well. 
probably by, by the time we get to six, seven, eight o'clock Friday night, um, it's you're gonna see the amazing amounts of snow and wind. So we'll probably do most of the day Friday, Friday afternoon, part of Friday evening as well. And then of course, with it being a holiday weekend, we will play it by ear for Saturday. But I know a lot of our chasers will be going back home on Saturday to be with their families, of course, for the Christmas weekend. So what we'll likely do is live coverage Thursday, Friday. I may post a quick YouTube short or just a quick video, maybe Saturday morning highlighting by then some of the high wind reports, some of the snowfall reports as well. And then we'll do a full recap of the event, probably Monday of next week. We'll probably do a live event, maybe Monday evening. We'll go back, we'll look and talk about what happened. We'll get you guys back here in chat. You can give me your personal experiences with the storm. If you lost power, hopefully not. How much snowfall you've got at your location, what kind of wind gust you had at your location. And again, we'll just sit here and we'll have a, a good 30 minute or hour long re review and recap of the storm next Monday. Once we've all survived the Christmas holiday and once we're somewhat getting back to normal, hopefully after the storm. So that's kind of our game plan for the rest of this week and through the weekend and of course going into next week as well. Yes, Adrian, what do the circles mean on the map? If you're just joining us, we talked about that at the beginning of the video. So if you missed the first part of the video, I encourage you to go back and you can rewatch this or um, you can watch it in its entirety. But better yet, go into your Radar Mega program and click on those circles. And yes, those are our Cyclone Port stations, live camera and live weather conditions at each of those sites. The weather conditions update every five seconds and the cameras are live streaming so you'll notice if you click on a camera that's close to a road which we've got one here north of jackson tennessee on a u.s highway there's your live stream from that weather camera north of jackson tennessee thanks to the madison county 911 there 38 degrees very little wind there in that part of tennessee and all those icons again are live weather stations all across the country <clears throat> All right, let me go back up, see what I missed in this chat, guys. Still, in, Liam was in high school in 78, went to bed, no snow, woke up buried in drifts of snow. I bet that was insane. <laughs> Excuse me. No school for a week. Well, thankfully, school is out for the holidays, but if it was not out, yes, I think we'd probably see school out at least for a week in some of these locations as well. Catherine, roof will lose a lot of shingles. I hate to hear that. I've been in your, I've been in your same area with my roof. It's about the time to get a new roof myself, and I've been losing a lot of shingles over the last year with severe storms and wind storms in my neck of the woods. So yeah, that's a, that's a rough place to be. Rough place to be with your shingles blowing off the roof there. Uh, Melanie, eighty-two mile per hour winds in Columbus. Yep, that was back in seventy-eight. Uh, they are calling hurricane force winds there in Cleveland. Yes, batten down the hatches in Cleveland. It's going to get rough. Thankfully, it's going to blow through rather quickly, probably 12 to 18 hours of the worst weather, including the hurricane force wind gust. But I think really into the day on Saturday, Saturday evening, I think those winds probably start to go down. It'll still be windy, but hopefully not those widespread hurricane force winds there in Cleveland later into the day on Saturday, and especially on Christmas Day Sunday. Those winds will, again, still be breezy, still be windy, but maybe not the damaging wind gust as we get into Christmas Eve night and Christmas morning. Melanie is preparing possibly for her parents losing power. Very good. Again, we talked about trying to come up with a plan now, if you do lose power, yes, portions of the south, your rights may not get snow. Some of you may get some surprise snow down in portions of Arkansas, North Mississippi, Tennessee, North Alabama, North Georgia. 
but not a lot of snow. This is not going to be your big snowstorm that everybody loves in the deep south. This is going to be dangerous wind chills, uh, possibly power outages all the way across the southeast with that wind. Thursday night as that front comes through all the way in parts of the Tennessee Valley, Ohio Valley especially, 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts possible even that far south away from the storm. One to four inches for Indiana. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good bet. Probably more in northern Indiana. I would not be surprised. About six plus easily north of Indianapolis there. Uh, and that was so sag asking that question there in chat. Lyle's got a Dodge 2500 4x4 with a plow. Well, you are set. You are ready to go, hopefully, for the, for the snow drifts there in your area. Uh, let's see. Melanie's supposed to travel from Cleveland to Columbus for the day on Sunday, about two hours there, then back. Yeah, you, good idea. You may be staying home for this one because that, with the holiday travel as it is on a good day, that's going to be quite the nightmare. And then you put this storm on top of that. Uh, very good, very good idea. To stay put. And just think about this too, guys. If you do have to get out, you know, if you need emergency services, it's going to be a delay, you know. Unfortunately, people still need EMS, still need fire department, police departments. Uh, these guys are out battling the elements as well. So, you know, think about them trying to get to you and maybe a delayed response because of the blizzard, uh, because of the, the snow drifts that they have to encounter, maybe down power lines, down trees because of the wind. So, again, just a lot to prepare for, a lot to think about there as we're getting closer to the storm. All right, going back down to the bottom here, I scrolled up just a little bit to try to catch up. Uh, Missouri Storm Chasers, you can. You do not have to subscribe to the app. The app is set up. If you want basic radar data, you buy the app one time and it's yours forever. Uh, if you're a weather nerd and you want more weather data, then we do give the option to subscribe. But of course, we are not forcing you to. But we, if you're a weather nerd and you want some of the data that we've shown here on the stream tonight, um, that is an option for you to go in and subscribe to us. Dave has got the snowmobiles and generator ready to go. Let it snow. Dave, where are you watching from? What part of the country are you watching from tonight? I may have missed it. If you've already let me know, but thank you for chiming in, and I'm glad you got the snowmobiles and the generator ready to go for the storm. <laughs> Melanie gets nervous every time we talk about Cleveland. Yeah, you're uh, you're, you're going to get blasted with this one there in Cleveland. Kathleen, grandparents talked about the blizzard of '82. Yeah, I've heard stories about the blizzard of '82 as well. Uh, the bright L, will there be snow in Houston? No, unfortunately, no snow in the Houston area. Can't rule out, let's let's go over and look at that right fast. You never can rule out flurries, maybe some snow showers as this Arctic, Arctic air moves in from the north, but no, nothing to get excited about there in the Houston area. Notice here, here comes our cold front. This is Thursday at 9 a.m. Let's zoom into the Houston area. Rainfall, maybe some rain showers starting Thursday morning. They will continue on and off through the day on Thursday. Probably not a lot of rain, just light rain. And then by 3 p.m., the cold front is to the north. 6 p.m., cold front is just to the north of Houston. Notice maybe a little bit of mixed precip there in southeast Texas, but not a lot at all. And then by 9 p.m., front is moving through Houston and moving out into the Gulf of Mexico. And as you can see, just not a lot of precip left over at all. So again, can't rule out a flurry. Maybe an ice pellet as that really deep Arctic air moves in, but nothing much there in Houston. Yes, Lynn, before virtual, le virtual learning days has changed it a lot, I know since COVID. So, you know, used to everybody got out of school, snow day, go outside and play in the snow. Well, now it's a virtual learning day for many places across the country. Not now, of course, it's Christmas break. But once we get back into January, yeah, you're right. Snow days aren't what snow days used to be. It's a virtual learning day for many pe people. 
Smalls, you're right. Those icy bars, they are packed tightly on the storm, and that just means the pressure changes dramatically over a short period of time and a short distance. So the closer you see those icy bars packed together on those historical maps that we were looking at, the greater the wind speed. Uh, Mace, very good question. What about states, state of emergencies across different states? Very, very possible. You know, all that does is that is uh, it, um, uh, basically speeds up the response process for the states and how they respond to the storm. So I would expect some of these states, if they haven't already, honestly, I've not looked at that yet. Well, I'll, I'll look at that tomorrow morning and we'll talk about that on our live stream tomorrow night. Uh, but yes, I would not be surprised at all to see uh, either local or maybe regional state of emergencies placed for this storm as we get into uh, tomorrow and especially on Thursday. Grand Rapids, Michigan, think we'll be able to drive locally uh, early Saturday or still too bad? Very good question. Let's go up to Grand Rapids right fast. Mm. You guys, here, here, I've got to admit something to you. I'm in the deep south. So if we get one inch of snow down here in the deep south, y'all know you make fun of me, of all of us. It shuts everything down until the one inch of snow is gone. You guys are a different breed, a different animal up in the north, the Great Lakes region, like Buffalo. You know, you've got people out clearing the roads and traffic is moving in the Buffalo area with six feet of snow on the ground. I was just blown away. So up in the Grand Rapids area, talking about driving Saturday morning. Um... Well, let's go through this model run because I think I already know my answer to your question, but we're going to we're gonna go through it together. Here we are Wednesday, not a lot. Snow moves into the Grand Rapids area Thursday during the day. So this is noon, 3 p.m., heavy snow, cranking snow. I mean, blinding. Visibility probably down to nothing Thursday evening. Winds cranking as well. That continues through early Friday morning. Friday midday, we've still got snow coming off of Lake Michigan into the Grand Rapids area. Friday evening, we've still got snow. And this model run, we don't go all the way through Saturday yet. This is midnight Friday night right here. Snow's still falling. Winds will still be cranking there in the Grand Rapids area. Let's go back over to the 10 meter wind gust. And... If you're further away from the lake, winds may not be so crazy, but there again, 27, 30 knot winds. That's 35, 40 mile per hour gusts still going on Friday night at midnight. Higher winds, of course, closer to the lake. So first thing Saturday morning, probably going to be pretty rough. Um, it's going to take some time for the crews to get out, for the plows to get out, and you know try to get those main arteries cleared out. You know, if you're talking about maybe closer to the midday Saturday, if we get a break in the snow, maybe. But <laughs> it's going to be tough either way you look at it. Um, it's it's going to be an experience if you try to get out on Saturday morning. By Saturday evening, maybe a little bit better. But Saturday morning there in Grand Rapids, probably pretty rough. What hours do they think worst with the wind? Uh, we covered that just a little bit ago, so if you missed that part, uh, once this is over, you'll be able, able to go back and, and watch this in its entirety. Um, the worst hours, I don't know your exact location, but um, depending on where you are, anywhere around the Great Lakes, the wind really starts to crank Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, Friday into Friday night. So I think Friday early morning through evening is going to be the windiest part of the storm. And then as it moves up into Canada, winds will still be gusty Friday night into Saturday, but they'll start to relax just a little bit as we get later into the day on Saturday. No, I am not the owner of Radar Omega, Chris. I am lucky enough to work for Radar Omega and... It's an amazing, amazing place to work, but I am not the owner of Radar Omega. Jackson, yes, I used to be on the Tennessee Valley Weather Channel. You're right. Uh, good buddy Ben Luna down there in uh, Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. 
Um, happy to still do a little bit of work with Ben and do a little bit of work with Tennessee Valley Weather as well. So glad you glad you noticed that. Appreciate you. Jackson loves the Radar Omega app. Appreciate that. Dayton, Ohio. There you go. All right, for the wind, windiest part for Dayton looks like to be as we get into Thursday night, all throughout the day on Friday, through Friday night, and then probably starting to relax on Saturday. We can go back over to our wind product on Radar Omega. Again, if you're an alpha subscriber, you have access to our models here in the app. So there you go. There's your wind product still cranking. Again, this only goes through Friday at midnight. So we've still got some pretty strong winds, especially over to Buffalo. Buffalo, you're delayed since you're further east. Winds start cranking there probably not until Friday night and all day Saturday, Buffalo and points north and east. But uh, Dayton, Ohio, all the way up to the Detroit area, you know, as we get through the day Saturday, I think we start seeing those winds come down just a little bit. Southeast Michigan, could it shift east to not get a ton of rain and more snow? Yes, very, very possible. Brandon uh, plays Roblox. Very possible. Depends on the exact track of the storms. If it shifts back further west, you'll get more rain, less snow. If it tracks further east, you will be on the snowier uh, side of the system and colder side of the system. Springfield, Illinois on Friday. Doctor's appointment in the morning and the party in the afternoon. That's almost like a party in the back, uh, a business in the front, party in the back. That's the mullet, right? You, you got a doctor's appointment in the morning. Nobody likes doctor's appointments. And then you got a party in the afternoon in Springfield. I lost that. Yeah, Springfield, Illinois. All right, here we go. Here you go for Springfield. Let's go back to precept type. And let's rewind that just a little bit. Here we are Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, snow moving into the Springfield area. This is midday Thursday at noon. Snow still going Thursday afternoon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and then according to this model run, now here's the thing about models, they change back and forth, run by run. So right now, this particular computer model has the snow moving east of the Springfield area by overnight, maybe say midnight Thursday night. And then that wraparound snow doesn't really make it that far south on Friday. So what you've got to remember there in central Illinois, whatever falls Thursday is going to stick immediately. Temperature is going to be below zero. So if they're able to get out and treat the roads, you'll probably be okay going to be cold as all get out. Wind chill readings dangerous, 20, 30 below. Windy as heck as well. But snow probably won't be falling there in Springfield on Friday. Flurries, yes. Snow showers, yeah, probably. Maybe a few. Especially if some of those snow bands can rotate a little bit further south around that low pressure area. But the heaviest snow will come Thursday during the day into Thursday evening and then moving out Thursday overnight. So the main story for you, for the doctor in the morning and the party in the afternoon, bundle up. Windy and frigid. Yeah, Melanie, you're right. By Sunday, the snow will be winding down there, but it will be freaking cold and messy. Very good words. <laughs> You are right about that. Traverse City, Michigan, how's totals looking? Let's go up to Traverse City. This is the NAM, and then we'll look at the GFS. This run has you guys in the 6 to, say, 10-inch range. We can go back one model run to the 12Z and compare and see what it shows. Pretty consistent around that 6 to 10 range. So now let's flip over to the GFS and we'll see what it shows for the Traverse City area. Let's let that load up. See that bar going across the top? And boom. GFS is a lot 
heavier with the snowfall totals there in Michigan, as you saw. Nam may be on the low side, guys. I really think the Nam may be underdoing some of these snowfall amounts. So there you go. How about a foot and a half to two foot of snow in Traverse City, Michigan, according to the GFS? Um, so it may be meet in the middle. You know, you may get 14, 15 inches. So we'll, we'll continue to watch the model trends flip back and forth. But heavy snow either way there in the Traverse City, Michigan area. I should grow a mullet. No weather wife, I should not grow a mullet. <laughs> and I've lost my mouse on the chat computer. There we go. Dave, my pleasure. Hey, that's what we're here for. We're going to talk about, like I said, on these live events, we talk about what you need to know, and then we're going to talk to you directly and answer the questions and give you that information that you need to know, because that's what it's all about. Um, I can sit here and just rattle on for hours, but we're not going to do that um, at the end and during each live event. It's all about two-way communication, back and forth, so thank you for... Uh, shouting us out on that and thank you for saying this is the best weather channel ever glad to have you with us stay tuned guys i teased it last night some crazy awesome things right around the corner here on the channel so we're going to be blowing your socks off as we get into the new year here on omega tv yeah i saw that brandon uh, with the newest 18z euro run um Toledo and portions of Ohio were getting close to that foot of snow. So I do think it is possible, again, depending on where that exact track of the storm goes. Hey, David, glad to have you with us tonight. Is Watertown going to see feel more on Saturday than Friday? And then Jackson, we'll get to Nashville, Tennessee in just a second. So let's look at Watertown. You guys have already got insane snow this year. Back when Buffalo was getting that historic snow, I know you guys were as well. There's your GFS total snowfall in the Watertown area. Easily foot, foot and a half, two feet possible. Let's go back and look at the NAM and we'll talk about the timing because you're asking about when you're going to see the worst of the storm. So let's go back over to our NAM computer model. And we're going to go down to the bottom and click Precip Type. So the question is, Watertown, New York, going to be filling this more? On Very good question. Thank you for that. Let's go in. The 0Z is almost done. It's still running. So we've got to go back to the 18Z model run. Not a lot in Watertown. Quiet weather through Thursday morning. Here we are at noon Thursday. Snow south of your area, moving up into southwest New York State, Syracuse area. And then as we get into Thursday afternoon, notice kind of a mixed bag of precipitation. Maybe a wintry mix, maybe some freezing rain, maybe some snow initially. But then I think we do see some of that changeover to maybe rain. Notice just your north, maybe not rain, maybe icy conditions. So you're kind of on the border there Thursday night. And then as we go into Friday morning, you get the warm slot of the storm. So I do think everything changes to rain early Friday morning there in the Watertown area. But again, hold on to your hat. Let's, let's, there's, your, there's your changeover. We'll look at temperatures here in just a second. 9 a.m. Friday, raining. Noon Friday, according to the NAM, you've now changed over to snow and that snow will continue right through Friday afternoon and Friday evening. Watertown area, depending on exactly where you are, you're going to get massive lake effect snow from this thing because you've got to remember the main low pressure system is going to be to your north and west. I'm a horrible artist. You can ask my wife. But the low pressure area is something like this. So we're going to be seeing the wind coming around the low pressure just like this counterclockwise and that's really going to set those lake effect bands up right into your area so i think your craziest time is going to be friday afternoon friday evening friday overnight and maybe into much of the day on saturday we'll have to go back over to the gfs to look at exact timing because again the nam doesn't go through saturday just yet 
We'll have that information for you tomorrow. So come back tomorrow night, and we'll definitely give you a follow-up on, on the Watertown area. Here you go, Friday evening, Saturday early morning. Heavy snow continues Saturday afternoon. Maybe, just maybe, starting to wind down in the Watertown area into Christmas morning. Would not be surprised to see the Lake Effect band still going, but maybe not as widespread as we get overnight Saturday night into Sunday. So again, it's going to be a pretty crazy 24 hours there in your area. <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee was my next one. Let's go down to Nashville. I think you may get some snow. I don't think you get a whole lot of snow, but it may not matter because any snow that falls there in the Nashville area will cause problems. So quick ban. There you go, 6 p.m. Thursday night. Rain in Nashville changing quickly to snow and probably ending by midnight Thursday night as that band pushes E. So we're talking three, maybe four hour window there in the Nashville area of some snow. Some of it may be heavy. And of course, if it falls heavily and with temperatures dropping from the 50s to the teens in a matter of four hours, it will stick and it will cause problems. So Nashville, light snowfall amounts, probably one to two inches at the most, but yes, you may get some snow there in the Nashville area. Tulsa, Richard, very good question. We'll back the GFS up just a little bit and we'll look at the NAM. You're on the very far southern end of that band of snow as it comes in. So I think you may see some light snow there in Tulsa. You'll get some crazy wind as that front comes through. Um, but the cold and the wind chills, I think, in Tulsa will be the biggest story. There's the NAM, Wednesday Back on the 0Z, let's go back to 18Z because the zero is still running. There you go, Tulsa, 6 a.m. Thursday morning, rain changing to snow. May continue through noon on this particular model run. Nam looks a lot better than the GFS for you guys. And again, couple inches of snow at least there in Tulsa would not surprise me at all. All right. And yep, guys, we're about to wind this down. Time has flown by. Melanie, you are right. We've been going since 7.30. It's almost 9 o'clock Central Time. We're about to wind this thing down because we've got more to talk about tomorrow night. So I'm going to get to a couple more uh, comments here in the comment section, and we're going to wrap this thing up at the top of the hour. And again, tune in tomorrow night, 8 or 8 through page tomorrow morning when we get that set for sure. And anything that we didn't get to tonight, jump back in, and we'll make sure we get to that tomorrow night. Thumb of Michigan totals. Uh, easily, depending on if you're in the northern or the southern part of that area of Michigan, and again, depending on the exact track, um, further south, three to six, further north, six plus possible. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll refine those amounts tomorrow with the updated computer models for you, Dominic. Sullivan, Missouri area. Yes, Kathleen. That's the thing about these big Arctic fronts, and then we'll, we'll wind it down after this. She's hearing that um, see anywhere from one to five inches of snow around the Sullivan, Missouri area, but is it possible that you could see more? Yes, and it's possible you might not see as much. Uh, there's always a surprise with these big winter storms. We can do our very best, and the computer models can do their very best with what to expect but there seems to always be a surprise that nobody saw coming, even at the last minute. So just because the, we've talked about totals and amounts, um, again, take that with a grain of salt because there, there seems to be areas that overperform and get a lot more snowfall than the models indicated. And there's areas that don't see as much snow as the models indicated. And there's some areas that the models hit it exactly on the head as far as what they forecast so again take everything we're talking about tonight we're still a few days out we'll have a lot better handle on the situation as we get into the day tomorrow and with that guys we're going to wrap it up current time 10 p.m eastern time 9 central thank you thank you for hanging out this evening 
Thank you for tuning in. I hope this was informational for you. Um, I hope this is maybe a little bit fun for you because it's all about trying to have fun, even though we're talking about the serious weather events that's about to play out across the country. If you're not able to join us again tomorrow, please tune back in and follow our live coverage at the end of the week. Make sure if you have not already, you subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Make sure you hit that notification bell as well and get all notifications. That will alert you when we do these live streams and that will alert you when we upload our forecast videos as well. And that way you're always getting the latest information. For you, we're excited for what we have right around the corner. And I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your evening. And again, stay tuned. A couple videos coming tomorrow, a live video tomorrow night, and a pre-recorded video probably tomorrow afternoon. So with that, have a wonderful rest of your evening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.